Hello everyone and welcome to this Unity tutorial. So in this tutorial we will go through how you can spawn and equip items in your multiplayer game using Unity's new multiplayer system MLAPI. So there's lots of tutorials on how to set up a multiplayer project and I'll link some of them below. In this tutorial I'll try to set up an example project rather quickly and then we'll spend some more time on the equipping and spawning part. So let's first add a network manager component to our scene. We'll then choose the unit transport. We'll also drag in our player prefab, which has a network object and network transform component attached to it. To test the multiplayer capability of our game, I'll use Parallelsync. Parallelsync clones your project, and then you can open this clone in another editor. I'll leave a link for Parallelsync below. So testing our project, and so far it seems to work fine. Next, we'll create a very simple equip script. I have prepared my player prefab with an empty game object called right hand slot. The right hand slot is set as a child of the camera. We'll use the right hand slot to equip items. So now let's move on to a minimal equip script, which I will name equip. In the equip class, We'll first need a member variable to hold the transform of the right hand slot game object. Then we'll need an object to equip. Normally, this would come from your inventory, which would be an object or a list or whatever your Im inventory implementation is. In this minimal example, I'll just have it as a single game object and name it equip item. Then we'll also need a game object to hold the item that we have currently equipped. I'll name it underline equipped item. Let's then equip this item when the player presses a key on the keyboard. For simplicity, we'll do it in the update function. To capture key presses, we'll need the unit engine.input system. Let's use the zero key to equip the item. So when the player presses the zero key, we'll instantiate the equip item. We will add a rigid body to this game object. So let's set it as kinematic and to not use gravity. The equip item game object does not need to have a rigid body, but here I chose to add it for no particular reason other than for demonstration. After handling the rigid body component, we set the position of the equipped item equal to the position of the right hand slot, and we'll also set the parent to the right hand slot. So back in Unity, we add the equip script to our player prefab and drag in the right hand slot. We also need a game object to equip. I will create a simple cube. Now we drag the cube game object to the equip item slot in the equip script on the player prefab. Finally, we add the rigid body component to the cube. If we test run the game now, we see that if I press equip on the client, the host player object on the client machine also equips and nothing happens on the host machine. So one thing that can be quite hard to get used to if you're new to multiplayer programming is that all scripts attached to your player prefab is also attached to the player prefabs of the connected players. So for instance, if I'm a client and I connect to a host, the host player object will exist in my scene in, on my computer, but I want the host player object on my computer to be sort of an empty vessel which is controlled by the player object that the host controls on his computer, and then let MLAPI sync the transforms and other relevant information between the player objects on different machines. Hence, in this example, I want to disable the equip script on all player objects except my own. And this we can do with the isLocalPlayer variable. And to access it, we include the MLAPI library in our script, and we also need to derive our equip class from network behavior instead of mono behavior. Now we can use is local player to check if the current instance is a local player object. For simplicity, we again do this in update and just copy paste the equip code into the if statement. If we were to test run the project again now, we would see that equipping on the client machine only equips the item on the correct player object. On the host machine, however, we still can't see that the client has equipped anything. This is because we only have instantiated the equipped item on the client machine. If all connected players should be able to see the equipped item, we have to somehow replicate the equipped item to all connected players. 
So how do we replicate this object onto the other connected clients? So this is called spawning. Since MLAPI uses a server authoritative model, all objects should be spawned by the server or host. And to spawn in this context, as I said, mean that we replicate an instantiated item to all connected clients, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So if the client wants to equip an item, we have to tell the host to instantiate and spawn the game object for us, and at the same time spawn the game object on all the connected clients. We tell the host to spawn the item using remote procedure calls, or RPCs for short. To access the RPCs, we need to include mlapi.messaging. We can then put the server RPC decorator above a method declaration, which then ensures that the method only runs on the server. So let's first create a method which only runs on the server and instantiates and spawns the equip item. I'll call this method equip server RPC. So in this method, I will first instantiate the equip item game object. And it can also be very helpful with some debug messages to see that everything works as expected. We can then call the spawn method on the network object, which should be attached to the game object, which we wish to spawn. Then we also have to tell all the clients that we want this game object to be a child of the right hand slot of the player that wants to equip it. So from the server, we can use another RPC to call a method on all the connected clients. So this is done with another RPC decorator, which is called client RPC. So here I forgot to add it, but I will add it later. Anyways, I will call this method equip client RPC. So to this function, we need to pass some kind of identifier with which we can use to locate the spawned item. So for now, I will just add an argument to this method and call it item net ID. I will also add another debug message. So MLAPI keeps track of all the spawned game objects in a dictionary. And to access this dictionary, we need to include MLAPI.spawning. So now we can access the objects using a unique network ID of the network objects that we spawn. So using network spawn manager dot spawned objects and then input item net ID. So now we want to fetch the network ID of the spawned object in the server RPC method using get component network object dot network object ID and then pass it into the equip client RPC. The rest of the equip client RPC will have to tell the clients where to put the spawned object. Therefore, it will look kind of similar to our original equip code. So I will just, just copy paste from the update method into the equip client RPC. But now we do not want to instantiate the item as the server already has done that for us. So we can only fetch the game object from the network object. So then in the update method, when the player presses the zero key, we call the equip server RPC method. So in multiplayer games, there is also a concept of ownership. The client or host that owns an object controls it transforms and only the owner of the game object can call RPCs from the attached scripts. So in this case, just to make it a little bit less laggy for the client that equips an item, we can set the ownership of the spawned item to the client that wants to equip it. So this can be done with the spawn with ownership method. We then also has to pass a unique client ID to the equip server RPC. But don't confuse ownership with a method to prevent lag. To prevent lag, you use some kind of interpolation to smooth out the movement between the frames. And here I realized that I forgot to put the client RPC decorator, so I will just put it in quickly. So back in Unity, the final thing to do is to add a network object and network transform component to the cube and add the cube to the network prefabs list. So now if we test run the project, we can see that everything works as expected. Both the host and the client can see the equipped item on the correct player object. So that was it for this tutorial. So next time will probably be about something a bit different, but expect more multiplayer tutorials later. So, thanks for watching! 
Whoa.